Alright, hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. This, of course, is another anime reaction video. Today, we're actually starting a new series, because now that I have to wait uh, a week in between episodes of Eden Zero, I decided I'm going to start a new series that's already finished, the 12 episode long original anime, Death Parade. Now, this is really interesting to me, because uh, I've already seen the opening, I'm not going to get a blind reaction to that, unfortunately, but uh, the song is a real, a real good song, it's a, a banger, as the youth would say. <laughs> Uh, and based on um, the title and uh, some of the visuals in the opening, this whole anime seemingly is going to be sort of following a bunch of different bar games, like darts and pool and stuff like that, but the fact that there's death in the name uh, makes me think that this is going to be some kind of, like, uh, I don't know, death games, like, no game, no life, but the consequence for losing every game is just death, or maybe it's more a more, like, abstract kind of thing where it's like this is like an interpretation of uh, like purgatory where you just kind of sit around and play games for a while until you accept the fact that you're dead and it could just be like an uplifting thing instead of like a, <laughs> like a sick like a psychological horror thing where you're playing with uh, you're gambling with your life essentially which would in itself be an interesting concept but uh you know that's besides the point i'm really excited to get into death parade uh if you if you already have seen Death Parade, I hope you join me along with this because I assume this is going to be a really interesting thing because I've I've heard about it before even before I decided to to react to it. Uh, I mean, if you do enjoy uh, Death Parade, make sure to hit that like button, and subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single upload in the future because it also helps me to know that you want more of this content and I'll clearly I'll make more in the future <laughs> with that information and uh, hopefully I'll check out a whole whole host of different kinds of uh, anime while I'm here on YouTube. Uh, as always, unless you're new, <laughs> link down in the description below will take you to the full-length uncut reaction. That being said, let's get started with episode one of Death Parade. I know there was an OVA called Death Billiards that came before this, and this was like an expanded version of that, so maybe I need to watch that because I'm missing something. But first of all, that was incredibly dark. The exact opposite of the OP. Like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> I was not expecting it to not only be a death game, like I said, not only is it a, like, a death game, so to speak, but it's also a fucking, it's like I was saying, it's the afterlife, and it's playing to see what happens to you next, but, and first of all, th there's so many things running through my mind right now, first of all, it was an amazingly well done episode, like, the camera work and the artwork and you know the way the camera moved around was the ex just the general execution was beautiful i loved it so much and like and the fact that they they went through so much so much in this episode with this like complex relationship and like i was saying in the, in the at the end of the ed there this is stuff that probably happens in real life too you don't know what's happening behind the scenes and even like the happiest couple that has drama behind the scenes nobody really knows the, the exact like things going on between them the complications but the, the biggest thing that's on my mind go back machiko is the winner she won and i'm assuming this whole reincarnation thing is based off of like buddhism because that's like the main thing that believes in like um reincarnation like good things you do and like that idea of karma as well like good you do good things you'll be reincarnated uh, reincarnated as something good and eventually you'll like break out of the cycle but if you do bad things you'll reincarnate as like a cockroach or something as something terrible and so the fact that machika won and the fact that they're both and i, I won't say that they're equally bad but they're they've definitely not done very good things in the relationship the fact that Machiko, who still won and was arguably, and this is debatable, it depends on the person, but is debatably the, the, the better of the two evils, so to speak, between her and Takahashi, or Takashi, uh, the fact that she went into the void, you know, and while he's reincarnated, that might be, depending on how you interpret the idea of reincarnation, the perfect ending or a confusing ending to that whole thing, because... Honestly, when Tak Takashi started freaking out and almost uh, attacked her, even though I don't know how that would work because they would be souls at that point, I think, it really had me rooting against him. But they, they both did bad things in this relationship. Uh, he wanted to be in a loving relationship, but he misinterpreted uh, something 
he got some information wrong and started like lashing out at her in a really bad way and based on what she was saying she never loved him from the beginning and just wanted him for his money which is also that's a terrible thing to do that's a terrible thing on her part it's really fucked up to to do that to someone but the fact that that she never loved him in the first place is either it, it's kind of bad on both sides because we don't know exactly why but it can be kind of said that it, it's bad on Takashi's part because he's not a good enough husband to like keep her happy but at the same time she's also kind of a what, what's the word a gold digger I guess you could say the fact that she was like that and even if she didn't cheat on him that fact alone that she's basically been stringing him along for so long if you ignored the fact that he got pissed off because he thought she cheated with no real evidence other than a nickname that kind of sounded like what a nickname for his wife would be. If you ignore that part, she's completely in the wrong there because she's really manipulative in that regard. She would be considered a manipulator in that way because she was just using him for it. But the fact that Takashi uh, misinterpreted that and was acting really cold to her and was just kind of generally being an asshole because he thought she did something that she didn't really do uh it puts in my mind him like like if we're ranking <laughs> if we're ranking their evilness uh Machiko would be about here and Takashi would be like about about here not too far off because they were both they were both really bad people to each other uh, when you take into account everything that's been happening but overall really interesting episode there are so many different things they could do this because i could see this just being like an anthology just being about the different uh, just about different situations that people who have died go through because there's a there's a lot a really a lot of different types of people in this world so i can imagine and i think on the roulette thing that they had they had one two nine different games on there they don't have to be the same games they could just be random like they randomly put different games on there but it could just be nine set games that they pick through uh some some groups of people could be they could do a whole like a, a large group of people it could be an individual person that would be interesting to see but um they could still fill out a few at least they could very well do enough episodes up to 12 episodes with just those nine games but what would be really interesting is at least towards the end at the very least is that they start exploring some of the the denizens of this place because that shot of um Takashi being uh, restrained by Dasim and him like carrying him like that was reminiscent of the shot at the end of the ED with the new girl supposedly who's because uh, she was uh, not used to the sort of system or whatever which really interests me because they're right outside of the game uh, at the elevators which makes me think that she's she is also dead and she's just kind of there and her game is some way in some way related to being here so I the fact that they went this dark and were invoking like a strong like emotional reaction out of me just from this makes me think that they're setting up something in the future with the people in um Queen Dekim I think it is Queen Dekim Queen Decim Queen Queen Decim Queen Dekim yeah Queen Dekim uh, taking that into uh, that would be really interesting if the whole Queen Dekim is her game or something like that you know. But, uh, with, again, like I was saying, with all the different kinds of people, with all the different kinds of, like, walks in life, it would be really interesting to see where they could go. Mm, maybe in the comments, maybe if I just do a little digging, hopefully not too much digging that I end up spoiling myself, but I'm really curious as to what, like, the whole Takashi gets reincarnated while she goes to the void, you know, means, you know? Because, again, depending on what your interpretation on what exactly reincarnation is that could be a good or a bad thing uh, to me at the least it seemed like that she she i don't think it was see because she started saying that she never loved him in the first place and that she had somebody else so it makes me think that she did in fact cheat uh with that other person which is fucked up but I guess the void would be the equivalent of hell because they called it void and not specifically hell even though they mentioned heaven and hell earlier but reincarnate but then what is heaven if he went to reincarnation as opposed to maybe 
Mm, see, I have a hard time with this whole interpretation thing because it, it's very it's very loose and vague. Maybe it'll get explained later on. But if void is the equivalent to hell, or is void heaven? Because is what's what's hell? Nothingness or is that heaven? Either way, punishment or pleasure that uh, Machiko is getting. I think it might be punishment because even though she was in a bad situation, being in a loveless relationship and being attacked by because well because she did cheat she did cheat <laughs> there is that so I could see her going to hell but Taka Takashi other than this stuff in the afterlife and being cold and not being a very good husband I don't I can see how that would lead to him not going to heaven but not being pushed into the void never to be reincarnated again it's it's like I said really vague. But it's really interesting. Has me very interested to <laughs> watch more in the future. Uh, let's see. All right. So real quick before I forget, I need to go back. <laughs> I need to go back to the first episode because I need to see back when they opened up to the dolls. I highly doubt you could see them because they're probably behind the. Uh... Oh, yep. There they are at the bottom. <laughs> there. No, I didn't. <sighs> Press the wrong button. For let me go back. You can just barely see the tops of their heads. Yep, there they are. It's so... It would be so hard to notice, but going back to see it now, yep, they're right there. <laughs> In the first episode. Alright. Real quick. Need to go... My anime list. Let me see the voice actors. Voice actresses. Voices. Uh... Alright, might as well put that on my list that I've watched the first episode... The uh, first two episodes now. Watching. Alright. Ekium. Uh, yeah. Let's see. I doubt any. I know. I recognize him from anything. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Oh, he was uh, the guy who teaches Yamaguchi serving, in Haikyuu. I didn't even uh, well, because I don't remember his voice at all. Oh, he was um, White Blood Cell in uh, Cells at Work. I need to finish watching Cells at Work season two. I started watching it. I'm like a few episodes in. I need to get back to that. Let's see, let's see. Anyone else? I I doubt it. Oh, he was Pain in Naruto? That's crazy. I haven't actually watched the anime. I just read the manga. <laughs> but that's pretty crazy. I do need to watch it at some point. At least parts of it. Not the whole thing. Not the filler. <laughs> okay, yeah. Alright, next up. Asumi. What? I don't even know who she was playing. Oh. For a second, I thought that was a uh, Hayasaka. Oh, she plays um the girl that has a crush on Daichi in Haikyuu. <laughs> what? Watch all of these uh, voice actors, or uh, voice actors and voice actresses are <laughs> characters in uh, Haikyuu. Uh, let's see. I'm not recognizing anyone else so far. Oh wait, hold on. Mada Akira and uh, Tokyo Ghoul. It's a shame that the, the anime wasn't better. <laughs> Rumiko Okuba. What do we got? I think she was Nona. <laughs> she plays uh, Astolfo. That's crazy. I haven't watched any of the Fate anime, but I want to get into Fate at some point. Koki Uchiyama, who I think is Clavis, which is the guy that was in um the elevator with the crazy hair. Oh, no way! He was Tsukushima in Haikyuu? I, I called it. All of them are in Haikyuu, but Tsukushima is like one of my favorite characters in the entirety of Haikyuu. Where's Where's Death Parade? Which character does he play exactly? Yeah, Clavis. <laughs> That's amazing. I knew he sounded somewhat familiar. For some reason I wanted to say he sounded like um Levi from Attack on Titan, but I knew that wasn't right. There was no way he was. But he was Tsukushima, which is honestly better for me because I like Tsukushima more than Levi. I don't know if that's a blasphemous, but he's really good. Alright. Anyway. Anyway, now that we've got those two things out of the way, now that I I made sure to go look and didn't immediately forget that I wanted to look at those things, uh, this was a really good episode. Oh wait, I'm on the wrong episode. There we go, episode two. This was a really interesting episode. The first opening scene. So that was just her waking up here. And the shots of a of a long thing before that, where she is now, which by the way I just realized that where where Nona and her are right now are or is the same place where Nona was, and in the end credit scene her home I would assume, which I need 
I hope to get more explanation on that. But it makes me think, based on the fact that there's like a long drop that you see, like there's like a maybe a tall ceiling, however you want to call it, right where she's laying. It makes me think that for some reason, she did come here from somewhere else, like the people who died, the human beings who died do, and she landed here for some reason. Or maybe that's just how it always works, and I'm just either misinterpreting it or I just wouldn't know yet because I haven't gotten that far. But either way, I really like the concept of, um, because I will admit, last episode was uh, confusing in some aspects, uh, and just like how everything works was not fully explained. And so I, I like the concept of instead of using, like, er, like in, instead of making like a throwaway people to play through a game so that they can, you know, explain the rules that way, like if they just had like a similar style of following Nona and this girl while they watched another game play, I don't think that would have worked as well because that would have basically made the the writing and the characters of the next game be trash in comparison because they're focusing on Nona and the new girl instead of uh, you know the game. So I, I really appreciate how they, they basically just went through the game that we watched last time again, this time from their perspective. And even though majority of it was focused on learning about how this world works exactly and having you know new girl get introduced to all this with Nona explaining it they still found ways to like add depth to the story we were told in the previous episode which i which is masterful uh, nothing short of a uh, masterful it's perfectly executed it, dare i say genius that they were able to not only reuse partially reuse the story of the last episode to help do some world building uh and on top of that add some extra depth to the previous story it's i don't know how they did it but it's really good and it bodes well for the rest of the series because if they can keep up this quality of uh, you know writing uh and if they can you know answer some of these questions in a very sat in a satisfying way as we go on I will consider this <laughs> to be a very good anime, despite only being 12 episodes, because that's the cool thing about original anime, is that since there's no guarantee that you'll uh, have future installments of the series, and there's no guarantee that... And, and because it's original, there's no like source material, that's what I meant to say. Uh, there's no source material, so because a lot of anime is usually advertisements for source material, but because it's original, there's no source material to advertise for, so you have to have a compelling story through and through to the end and a satisfying conclusion, or else, you know, that's it. <laughs> if you don't have a satisfying conclusion, then it'll feel like people have wasted their time because not only was it not satisfying, there's also no no kind of guarantee, especially with an unsatisfying ending, there's an even less guarantee of um, continuation because people are unsatisfied with the ending and they can't even go to a source material. I said so many words there. I'm sorry if I confused you by not being able to perfectly like articulate what exactly I was trying to say, but I think you, I think you for the most part understood what I was trying to say there. Um, let's see, what else do I want to talk about this episode? I think it's really interesting that the way they they decide whether or not a person will be reincarnated or will be put to the void uh, is based entirely on the opinion of somebody who watches who knows everything about their life and then just watches how they act during the game. I think that adds like a really interesting like moral conflict and like dilemma because everyone's going to have different opinions on what what should happen. Obviously, I have different opinions. Obviously, uh Nona will have different opinions. Uh Dekim has different opinions. New Girl has different opinions. So, I think it'll be it's a really interesting moral conflict to and, I, and what I really want to know is, like, the, the biggest thing I want out of this is just, like, reasonings. Because not having reasonings as to why you do things just makes makes the things happening a bit more uh, unsatisfying to think about, like, in the long run. Because they can be shocking or interesting at the moment, but if they're not properly developed, it kind of just sucks. So the fact that they kind of left the first episode vague, it didn't make me hate the first episode but i it, it did dampen a little bit of my uh, like how like objectively i viewed the episode when they just sort of didn't have it like that and they just kind of left it up to me i have no problem with interpretation i still love the episode but i think the fact that they had they didn't necessarily confirm it but the fact that they added a different character to speculate 
on their own in universe i think not only helps to make this the whole first episode a bit more satisfying to when they add in uh extra layers of like complexity but i think it also brings up a potential future plot point in that there's going to be like moral conflicts between the characters in universe like conflicting opinions are going to get into fights maybe and the fact that the the op is so like misguiding and misguided not misguided misleading to the tone of the series and the fact that she does act nona does act really cheery so far in the throughout the episode but the fact she acted really cheery in the op and then uh god damn it let me find it let me find it again right here she pulls in uh pulls in Dekim real quick and it's almost like she wants him not to think about these things she just wants him to make the decision right now and don't ever think about doing going back again and it could just be a case of like uh, don't worry about your past mistakes because that'll blind you from making decisions in the future which is something i can partly agree with but it, it based on how the show has gone and how very different it is from the opening it almost makes me feel like she's trying to manipulate him into staying on the straight and narrow and just making the decisions without thinking too much into it or having any regrets it might just be not having regrets so that he doesn't make any like decisions later on based on those regrets it might be a case of that too which it'll be interesting to see how that develops especially because of the ending scene where what did what did what did she say let me i need to go back and see what she said again on my phone she said something because we 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 get into this phone call at the end and three month term i assume it either means a new girl or herself i'm not sure which but i'm gonna lean towards new girl and ooh, i don't know who this person on the side is but looking at the character on the right on the cover of this book it's kind of got it's it's like a shorter version of dekim's hair and the fact that it's like a similar like silverish color if it was just a little bit long it, it kind of looks like dekim's hair it's it's i don't know if i'm weird for thinking that but it could be something in the future but speaking of the future I'm super excited to keep watching this show, and if you're, if you want, and if you want to watch the rest of the show with me, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, turn the notification bell on, so you don't miss a single upload in the future. Thank you once again for watching. Peace.